Hey there, my name is Gary Sims and this is Gary Explains. I got the Surface uh, Pro X about a month ago. I've got an unboxing video here on this channel and I've been using that month to find out what's good and what's bad about this detachable two-in-one laptop. So if you wanna find out more, please let me explain. So the Surface Pro X, as the name tells us, is part of Microsoft's Surface Pro lineup. That means it's a touchscreen device, two-in-one detachable that can operate with or without a keyboard, making it either a tablet or a laptop. Now the design of the Surface Pro X is truly a wonder to behold. It is thin, it is light, and it looks really pleasing to the eye. Looking just at the tablet part without the keyboard, on the front of course you have this gorgeous 13 inch screen, and we'll talk more about the screen in a moment. And then as you go around the device you have the power button, the charging port, and the volume rockers and two USB-C ports. And of course, at the bottom there is the connector for the detachable keyboard, and there is the kickstand. Now, common with many, many other Surface Pro devices, this has a kickstand, which means that the device stands up on its own with or without the keyboard attached. You don't need to have the keyboard on it to be able to make it stay in a more traditional kind of laptop position. On the front, you've got front-facing cameras. On the back, there's a rear-facing camera for all your video chatting and so on. And with the keyboard attached, it's about 13 millimeters thick, so you'd say it's about the same size as a pad of paper. If you can carry around a pad of paper, you can carry around the Surface Pro X. The keyboard can be attached and detached relatively quickly. It's magnetic, so it just clicks into place very quickly. And on the keyboard yourself, you have a normal QWERTY keyboard and a mouse pad built into it. And there are a set of function keys as well for controlling the volume and the brightness. The standard kind of things you would find on a laptop, you find here on this keyboard of the Surface Pro X. There is another version of the keyboard which also has a home for the stylus, and there's a stylus you can use with the Surface Pro X. I didn't get that version, so I'm not reviewing that right now. In terms of specification, you can get uh, eight gigabytes of RAM or 16 gigabytes of RAM, and the model I'm using is eight gigabytes of RAM with 128 gigabyte internal storage. That's an SSD using NVMe. And as I mentioned earlier, there's also two USB-C ports. And the great thing about the Surface Pro X is you have built-in LTE. And so you're able just to pop open the cover, stick in a SIM card, and then you've always got connectivity. Now, lots of people say to me, but you can just connect your laptop to your a smartphone using a hotspot, using some kind of tethering, and that's absolutely true, you can. But of course, the idea of these devices are that you get long battery life, and if you are connecting it to your phone, then you're gonna kill the battery life in your phone. And so when you get to wherever you're going, your phone will be dead, but your laptop will be working. That isn't the way you want things. What you want is to have connectivity from your laptop, and your phone can still have full charge, or a good charge, when you arrive at your destination. It's all about battery life. In terms of the processor, of course, the big difference is here is is that the Surface Pro X does not use an x86 based processor. So it's not a processor from Intel, it's not a processor from AMD. This is in fact a Qualcomm based processor, which Microsoft have tweaked and they've called it the Microsoft SQ1. And this processor is based on the ARM architecture. So what we see here is Windows 10 running natively on an ARM processor. Now obviously this will have some implications in terms of the software ecosystem and we'll talk more about that at the moment. But when you first turn on this device, when you start using it, you are seeing Windows 10 exactly the same as you would on an Intel processor or an AMD processor on any other laptop. You don't know at the beginning that there's anything different about this particular machine. So before we talk more about the software, let's just talk a little bit about the display and the battery. This display is a nice high resolution display. You've got 2,880 pixels by 1,920 pixels running at 60 Hertz. It's a 13 inch pixel sense display with 3.2 aspect ratio, 10 point multi-touch and a maximum brightness of 450 nits. And I must say that it is one of the positive good points about this laptop using display is really a pleasure and really brings out the uh, experience of using this device. Now Microsoft are quoting 13 hours of battery life for the Surface Pro X. I did some testing, for example, if I played a 
a video file repeatedly full screen at 50% brightness, I actually managed to get it to run for 14.5 hours continuously from 100% right down to zero. And that's also true if I play the same video file over Wi-Fi from a local server here in my office, 50% brightness, I'm getting 14.5 hours. Interestingly, when I use the web browser, that's the Edge web browser from Microsoft, which of course is a native ARM64 uh, a browser uh, application, when running that same video file over Plex, the battery life went down to 9.5 hours. Now that would be interesting to investigate. I don't know what happened there to make Plex particularly, or the web browser particularly, drain a bit more of the battery. Now, uh, Microsoft are quoting, as I said, 13 hours, and I can say that for normal usage, which would be productivity, web browsing, video, media consumption, then you're definitely gonna get those kinds of numbers. So as I said, here we are running Windows 10 on ARM. So that means that you have to have applications that are compiled to run under ARM to get the best performance. Now at the moment, things like the Microsoft Edge web browser come natively supporting ARM64. There are some other third-party apps that you can start to download that are already uh, making available ARM64 versions. For example, VLC, the Video Land Client, the famous uh, and popular uh, media player, you can get that in an ARM64 version. You can get Firefox web browser in an ARM64 version. You can get Putty, the secure shell uh, client, in an ARM64 version. However, not everything is available as ARM64. So for example, I downloaded and installed LibreOffice, which is an x86 version. It installed without any problem. It runs without any problem. And you wouldn't know because basically you can't type faster than the computer is able to uh, put the characters on the screen. You'd never even know that this was wasn't a native application. Now support the non-ARM64 applications, there is built-in x86 emulation, basically some very clever software that we've seen in other things before, which can translate the uh, x86 code into ARM code. And also, of course, remembering when it calls any kind of system DLL, the C runtime library, anything to do with the operating system, of course, it switches straight over into native ARM code. And so the code that's actually running in the application itself is emulated. There's some clever stuff that allows it to store and recompile and there's just in time and we won't get into that now, but actually it's really, really good. I haven't actually come across any problems installing the mainstream applications on this laptop. There is one drawback to the x86 emulation, that is that x86 64-bit emulation is not yet available. It is coming, but it's not going to be available anytime soon. So that means if you do install an x86 application, for example, like LibreOffice, then you're going to need to install the 32-bit version because the 64-bit version won't work. However, lots of companies like Adobe are promising to bring over their uh, applications to ARM64. So at the moment, if you do run things like Photoshop or Premiere Pro, then probably this isn't the laptop for you. However, if you are running word processing, web browsing, uh, you know, other kind of normal productivity apps, even some gaming, light gaming, then there's not gonna be any problem that you are using the Surface Pro X. Talking of gaming, for example, I did install uh, Asphalt 9, uh, the x86 version. I installed it from the Microsoft Store and actually it plays pretty well considering that it is the x86 version running under emulation. So even for light gaming, as I said, this could be the laptop for you. If you are a serious gamer, then of course you wouldn't even think about getting this device. Now drivers is often a problem for everybody on Windows and so I thought about connecting up my Surface Pro X to my other printers that I have here. Now I have an Epson L3150 which is a color inkjet printer and Windows 10 on the Surface Pro X. Found that straight away and was able to print to it without any problem. However, I do have an older Canon laser printer and I could not find the drivers to make that work. And I also have a Canon selfie photo printer and Windows was not able to find that either. So you may have to double check to make sure the drivers are available for any peripherals like printers and scanners. Now performance is often something people think about when they are dealing with an ARM-based processor, when they are dealing with an ARM-based processor running Windows. So I've done three different types of testing here and they each give us three different aspects of the performance. Starting with my own thread test tool and the source code is available on my GitHub repository, running under Windows subsystems for Linux, running 16 threads looking for 25 million prime numbers, the test completed in 25.7 seconds 
on the Surface Pro X. Now, when you compare that to my Ryzen 5 desktop, which is a Ryzen 5 uh, 1600 six core hexa-core processor, my desktop PC, that completed the same test in 53 seconds. So the Surface Pro X was twice as quick as my AMD Ryzen 5. And when I ran it on a MacBook Pro 2015 model with an Intel Core i5 processor, that took 128 seconds to complete exactly the same test natively compiled on each of these platforms. So obviously a huge difference between 25.7 seconds and 128 seconds. Now for the next test, I used Firefox, the native version for each platform, so ARM64 and Intel where appropriate, to boot up a version of Windows 2000 using a Java script uh, emulator. Now the MacBook Pro did very well on that. That's the 2015 Intel Core i5. Was able to do that in 36 seconds. My Ryzen 5 desktop was able to do it in 40 seconds and the Surface Pro X did it in 52 seconds. Now for comparison, I also have a Surface Pro 4, which has got the Intel M3 processor, and that did the same boot up in 56 seconds. So the Surface Pro X is clearly, even on web browsing things, running JavaScript faster than previous generations of the Surface Pro uh, lineup. And the final test I did was to encode some uh, video files into uh, H.264. And under the Ryzen 5, the test I ran took 27 seconds uh, on Windows 10 under the Ryzen 5, 43 seconds on the uh, Surface Pro X, and 71 seconds on the MacBook Pro. So what we can see here is that depending on what the test is, depending on who comes out top. So for example, the MacBook Pro came last in my 16th thread test, it came last in the uh, MPEG encoding. However, it came first in booting up Windows 2000 under JavaScript. Conversely, the Surface Pro X came in first under my thread test tool, kind of in the middle for the booting Windows 2000 and for the uh, FF MPEG test. So it really does depend on your workload. But the takeaway here is that this is no slouch. It can hold its head up high amongst the other laptops that and desktops that I'm testing with here. Of course there are faster desktops, of course there are faster laptops. That's always going to be the case, but this is no slouch. That's the key point. Now the real big question though, of course, is value for money. And even value for money when you compare this device to other Surface Pro or other Surface devices. So not even comparing it to Dell laptops or to uh, HP laptops or to whatever laptop is your favorite brand, just looking inside of the Microsoft Surface ecosystem, the pricing uh, that proposition, the value proposition for the Surface Pro X is hard to see. So for example, the Surface Pro X with eight gigabytes of RAM and 128 gigabytes of internal storage with the keyboard without the pen will set you back $1,139. Whereas a Surface Pro 7 with an Intel i5 processor and the same amount of RAM, the same amount of internal storage will cost you $1,030. So about $100 more to get the Surface Pro X. And of course, if you look at things like the Surface Go, there you can get eight gigabytes of RAM, 128 gigabytes of storage uh, with an Intel processor, not a very powerful one, but still an Intel processor, and you can only pay $800. But of course, the Surface Go has a much smaller screen, offers less battery life, maybe around nine hours. The Surface Pro 7 has a smaller screen than the Surface Pro X, but it does have that Intel processor, but you're still only gonna get 10.5 hours of battery life. And of course, the uh, Surface Pro X has LTE built into it, which the Surface Pro 7 doesn't, but there are some versions of the Surface Go that do have LTE. So you really do have to make a choice about what you're going to do. However, since Microsoft are offering this laptop as a unique niche kind of laptop with an ARM processor, and yet it's more expensive than a more traditional Surface Pro, that does make it a hard sell, because you would just say, why not save $100, buy the Surface Pro 7, and I'm not get, I haven't got any worries about compatibility and 32-bit and 64-bit and ARM and Intel, I can just buy it. However, if you would like to run Windows 10 on something other than x86, if you are technically uh, savvy enough that you're able to cope with the little issues around emulation and around the different processors architectures, if you really like to see Windows subsystem for Linux running on ARM and it does run very well on ARM, then the Surface Pro X is for you. 
Okay, so that's about it. Now I do want to make a few more videos using the Surface Pro X. I want to make one on the Windows subsystem for Linux, but of course with Windows on ARM. So then everything that's inside that Linux subsystem will actually be an ARM binary and not an Intel x86 binary. And I also want to make a video on how you make Windows apps for Windows on ARM using the Surface Pro X and of course using a traditional x86 Windows 10 desktop. Now, if either of those two videos interest you, then please think about subscribing to the channel so that you know when I drop a new video. Okay, that's it. I'll see you in the next one.